Let me tell you what you are missing, Dr. Jones. While you were playing your pointless game, I was playing you. You're wondering if maybe you should have built yourself a life of meaning instead of ending up here, dead and forgotten in the sands of Africa. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't think I'd be doing this, but never say never. Microsoft's Developer Direct 2024. Let's see what they have in store for us. Myths. History. Just different ways to interpret the past. Thousands of years of humanity's thoughts and beliefs scattered and buried. I'm not necessarily sure how to feel about the first person aspect of the game, but I think the cool thing about it is that the first person aspect of the game was probably made in order to distinguish itself or its identity from its contemporaries like, um, like Tomb Raider and Uncharted, especially Uncharted. So I think it's a, an interesting choice to go with. Whether or not it's going to be cool for the game entirely remains to be seen. Waiting to be found. You can't just run away from your problems. Indiana. Watch me. Throughout history, mankind has built sites of great spiritual significance. If you were to draw a line through these ancient sites around the globe, you get a perfectly aligned circle. I've had run-ins with these guys before. Trust me, it ain't a walk in the park. Okay then, let's see if you can keep up. What do you mean if I can keep up? of the fallen angels protector of the Chukumani the great circle you have any idea how old that was? Okay, so it seems we're off to a good start. So, yeah. Okay, what's next? Welcome to Obsidian Entertainment. I'm so proud to share with you our upcoming fantasy action RPG, Avowed. Avowed is an adventure into the heart of the living lands a frontier at the edge of the known world, where you must put a stop to a mysterious spiritual plague and discover a secret at the heart of the living lands. Some quests in Avowed will have you make difficult decisions with profound consequences, like this side quest you may encounter in Shatterscarp, the third region you'll explore on your journey through the living lands. As you're exploring, you come across the bodies of these fallen soldiers. And as you explore the remains of the battle, it's up to you to determine who, if anyone, is at fault. Just the four of us. Manu, Kiri, Naoki, and me. Training under Captain Ruiki. Trying to keep Thirdborn safe. In other words, you're a gang of vigilantes. Not that I'm one to judge. Here. Take my badge. Take everyone's. Our families deserve to know we fought and died for them. Making the right choice isn't always what it seems. 
We embrace moral nuance and gray areas, trusting players to make tough decisions in complicated situations. My, my squad and I rested in the cave by the water last night, and as we were sleeping, we were ambushed by those miserable Zorips. I was so surprised, and it was so dark. I just got separated from everyone else. Look, I, I, I can't face those monsters alone, but I have to know if anyone else made it out. Of course he did. Sergeant Asui never has a thought. He. I, I'm really enjoying this guy's voice. <laughs> Hey, what does he sound like? He sounds like such a, a ghetto black guy in Javili. Hey, <laughs> it's quite interesting voice. I would expe I, I didn't expect a character like this to have that type of voice. But uh, what, what? Honestly, now, now that I'm, I'm thinking about it, I'm looking at him clearly. He does have the dreadlocks, so of course it's gonna be played by a black guy. That's the only. <laughs> that's the only way you know for certain that it, yeah, this is a black guy. All of them have a stereotypical dreadlocks and whatnot, so yeah, why not? Of course he did. Sergeant Asui never has a thought he won't say out loud. So what did he tell you? That Captain Ruiki was sick? That I was paranoid? That I was a dumb baby? I heard it all often and loudly. Wait, if you found Sergeant Asui, why is he not here with you? What happened? At the end of the quest, you have a choice. When you confront Private Naoki, if you believe the story he's told you, you can hand over the badges and let him go back home. You're right. Real battle isn't something you can prepare for, is it? It's not my fault. No, they, they should have never have camped in the cave. I'll take the badges. I'm going back to Thirdborn. But if you confront him, if you believe that he fled the site of the battle as an act of cowardice, then he might challenge you to a fight to reclaim his honor. Either way, when you return to town, you'll see the consequences of your actions and the choices you made during this quest. These choices and consequences. We've heard this plenty of times from this modern gaming industry. I'm not even sure if I can believe them anymore. The only game whereby when they were talking about choices and consequences where they seem to have really mattered i would say witcher 3 if not witcher 3 then maybe maybe detroit become human the, the choices there seemed as if they did matter but they still followed no 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 no. the choices did matter yeah 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 i remember clearly now. i remember clearly now <laughs> the choices do matter i remember when i was playing when i was playing Detroit Become Human, my first playthrough. I let I let the girl die in the playthrough, in, in Kara's playthrough. So you have the choice to either save the girl, confront the abusive dad, and I chose to like just sit it out and see what happens. And Kara's choice, Kara's playthrough was completely wiped from me. So yeah, that's an example of choices and consequences done right. As for these guys, we'll have to wait and see. As you're wandering the wastes of Shatterscarp, you might notice off in the distance a vibrant jewel of color. By transitioning from destitute, muted tones of a wasteland of sand and marching in towards a beautiful oasis, there's the opportunity there for life, for adventure, and even a little danger. We hope you've enjoyed this look at Avowed. We're thrilled to share more about the game in the coming months, and we can't wait for you to explore the living lands when Avowed launches this fall. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm just not interested in this game. <laughs> I'm not interested. I'm not interested in this game, which is I, I guess it doesn't really mean much to me since I am a I am a Sony fanboy. So I'm not gonna play it anyway. But it's nice to have Xbox show off something, you know. Because it's been a while since we've seen Xbox do anything that's worthwhile. Especially games, exclusive games coming from Xbox. So it's really nice to see them doing something. But as for Avowed, I think it's a nice game. But I'm just like, yeah, just, okay, okay. Next. Why would you say that? Like, you put me in such an uncomfortable situation. Like, you know I'm not happy. You know I'm trying to see if it'll work out here. And I know that it's not. Hi, I'm Don Matthews, studio head here at Ninja Theory in Cambridge, UK. We're now in the final months of development on Senua Saga Hellblade 2. 
and the team is working hard to bring you an unforgettable journey into Senua's unique world and her battle for survival, where we have once again combined high fidelity and immersive presentation with a shorter, narrative-led experience that focuses on the things that we really care about and that we hope you care about too. This is the only game that is on Xbox that I am envious of and jealous of because of the fact that Hellblade 2 is not going to be coming to PlayStation anytime soon since it is an Xbox exclusive. No, please, please don't say that. They deserve the win, guys. It's just, it's nice to see Xbox winning and stuff, you know, because Xbox has been quiet. They promise exclusives. They don't deliver. They always talk about this year is going to be our year. This year is going to be our year. But then nothing happens. and they, do not, they don't have any games to show for it. So, so anyway, it's nice to see them actually really bringing their A game. See how small you are. You see how the pitiless world wants her down. Senua is back with a new quest. She wants to stop the Vikings who raided her village right at their source in Iceland. But not just her quest has changed. I this girl is pretty guy. Yo, I this girl is pretty man. She looks just like the she, just, she looks just like Senua. <laughs> I expect that she looks just like Senua. <laughs> I bet she's quite cute, man. Elf has grown since the first Hellblade. She's made peace with her past and is no longer in such fear of her visions and voices. While the Furies are still her constant companions, she encounters new people along the way, some of which will value her unique perspective and others who will reject it. Little by little, this settlement became my tribe. Yo, oh, I'm just praying, please, no LGTB stuff on in, in this game. Please, please, please. But uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter since I won't be playing it anyway. But I have a vested interest in this game because it came out on PlayStation. So, and I didn't get to, I didn't get a chance to play it, man. But I, I really, it's, a, it's, it's one of those games I look forward to. I regret having not played, you know. So I just hope they don't ruin it like they ruin everything else. Microsoft these days, guy. Microsoft and Sony, the entire industry is just, it's poison these days. In the game, Senua arrives in 10th century Iceland on the trail of the Vikings who have been enslaving her people. In the story, we're trying to be as faithful to history as we can up to a point, establishing a solid framework and then building more surreal elements on top. Senua will face up to giants who have plunged the land into chaos and which in turn has seen the rise of the Joiga, a violent threat that has swept through the settlements that she'll discover. Hopefully this is the first game that can showcase the true power of the Xbox. Because I was hoping that Starfield would do that, but Starfield just... <laughs> Starfield was just asleep, guys. So there's no point talking about Starfield. It was hyped up to be this next gen, 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 but ultimately it was a snooze fest. Senua is a Celtic warrior who experiences psychosis. Seeing things that other people don't, hearing voices and having unique beliefs about the world around her. To bring Senua's perspective of the world to life in a truthful way, we have once again worked closely with Professor Paul Fletcher at the University of Cambridge, as well as people with lived experience of psychosis. You really have to appreciate when developers go the extra mile, whereby they talk to specialists or they go to the areas that they're going to be shooting, certain locations of the game in, just to get a feel for that. It's really amazing, man. It's really beautiful beautiful and hostile environments, seeking answers from patterns and signs that Senua sees in her own unique way, and battling through encounters with enemies that will push Senua to her limits. I'm angry. On Saga, we've taken everything to the next level. With a new motion capture space, a bigger stage team, a stunt crew and a new cast, we spent a lot of time planning the motion capture shoots, thinking of what events would be good to bring into this fight. Like, how can we make this fight feel different from the previous fight? We have all new combat for the sequel. Guys, am I the only person that still hopes secretly for a DMC 2 from Ninja Theory? 
I'm one of those people that I can understand why people didn't fall in love with DMC, but I kind of liked it. I'd like a second part, man. I'm still holding up hope. Fingers crossed. Ability to actually tell a story throughout it. <laughs> It does feel very different from the first game, but it's very brutal and you're very invested in it. Senua isn't a superhero. She's fighting for survival and we want the player to feel her struggle in every step of her journey. We want the player to always feel like they just scraped through, just survived it. I'm so proud of the love, care and passion our team here at Ninja Theory are putting into Senua's saga Hellblade 2. Our hope is to not only create a game that is great to play, but to craft an experience that leaves you thinking and feeling. From our combat gameplay through to our action set pieces, from our cinematic scenes to our puzzle solving, everything is crafted in service of Senua's journey. A journey that you can embark on, on May 21st. Hi, man, Hey, Xbox guy. I'm happy for you guys, man. I'm so jealous of this. I'm so jealous, guy. Hey! Now I have to get an Xbox. Ah, guy. But if I'm being honest, this is a game that would make me buy an Xbox. This game alone. This game would make me get an Xbox just because of Hellblade 2. May 21st. Yeah, guys, that's about it. How did I find this expo? Uh, I'm going to be honest. The only thing I'm excited for is Hellblade. <laughs> Even though I'm not going to... I'm not gonna play it, <laughs> but the only thing I'm looking forward to is Hellblade. As for the rest, uh, I think overall the expo was just, I wouldn't say it was boring. I mean, I saw Indiana Jones, so <laughs> someone on Twitter was saying, God, I hope they won't be asking us about pronouns and stuff like that because there was this one character they was wearing, uh, a developer was wearing, you know, one of those allied shirts of the community that must not be named. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, it's better than what we've been getting from Microsoft. At least in this one, we finally got games. At least we got something. But overall, compared to their competition, very lackluster. Yep, that's all I got. Peace.